All right, so can you hear me clearly? Uh, so welcome to the last session of, of Flink Forward. And uh, in this last talk, uh, we will be talking about the work we have been doing uh, in, for approximate computing in stream analytics. And this work, uh, which we call it as a stream approx, uh, we have the version implemented both for Apache Flink as well as uh, uh, Spark. And for Spark, we will be presenting the same uh, project uh, in Spark Summit uh, next month. So uh, this is a joint collaboration between uh, Technical University of Dresden, which is not far away from here. Uh, I am Pramod. I'm based at the University of Edinburgh uh, and Nokia Bell Labs, which is in Stuttgart, Germany. So uh, as I said, uh, Stream Approx is a system for approximate computing. Just show of hands, how many of you know about approximate computing? Uh, quite a lot, right? So uh, <laughs> in this uh, project, we basically try to apply approximate computing uh, for stream analytics. And uh, you will see why we want to do approximate computing in the next slide. So let me get, start, uh, get started with the motivation behind our project. So the general motivation, like uh, as you all know that we most online services that we use in our day-to-day -day life uh, basically are data-driven right now, nowadays. Uh, these online services, they ingest a lot of data from different sources, be it uh, sensors or IoT devices or clients, mobile clients, uh, and use a stream aggregator like a Apache Kafka and transform this raw data that is coming in continuously in some useful information. And this information could be based on their application, right? So while designing a stream analytic system uh, for really large number of clients or, uh, or data that is coming in with a uh, huge volume, uh, a challenge for stream analytic system is that it has to achieve two main goals, all right? Uh, the first is, uh, to achieve really low latency, right? So we are talking about days now, we are talking about microseconds. Uh, it's important for any decision making uh, to prevent, let's say, some fraud. And on the other hand, the second important uh, design requirement for a stream analytic system is that uh, we want an efficient resource utilization. So we want to make sure that we get best out, out of a penny that we spend in our infrastructure, right? As you can think about, uh, these two design requirements are contradictory, right? Uh, there is a tension here, mainly because uh, we can actually achieve low latency by employing more computing resources, because most of the stream analytic systems follow a data parallel programming model, which means we can simply scale out and get uh, low latency. But it comes with the cost, right? And the second problem that you see may see that uh, it may be the case that the amount of data that you have to process and the amount of computing resources that you have, you cannot actually uh, compute on entire data uh, on, uh, with the d resources that you have in, in, in your hand, right? So for such cases, uh, there is a new computing paradigm that is sort of popping up uh, in the big data community and which is called approximate computing, right? So this is what uh, is the talk about. So the approximate computing is a computing paradigm that basically gets the best of both worlds, right? So we can actually get low latency, and we can actually achieve this with the amount of resources that we have in our hand. So what is approximate computing? Uh, basic idea is quite simple, which is that for many applications, uh, uh, it's OK to have an approximate answer rather than a correct answer, right? So many recommendation engines that we use actually inherently make decisions on approximate output, right? Because you have some sort of approximation going on. Uh, so for example, here, uh, uh, for instance, an example here uh, that Doe actually picked up from Google Trends, right? Uh, Google Trends basically tells you what is uh, hot in the, uh, in the search, for example. And if you want to, if let's say if I'm a client, I'm interested in which topics are trending more, like uh, between big data and machine learning. Uh, so Google Trend will give you me, me some approximate answer where it just tells us the, as the number of queries that are trending, like uh, approximate trend, not telling exact number of queries that are being issued for big data or machine learning, right? And with such an approximate information, I can make a decision like I want to buy yes or 
A or B or something like that, right? And if you start thinking about many use cases, uh, actually can be satisfied with this approximate answer rather than exact answer. So uh, if uh, you have such a uh, flexibility to work with an approximate answer in your application, you can actually uh, achieve the desired latency or uh, employ desirable computing resources by working only on subset of data rather than exact data, right? So approximate computing, we instead of computing over the entire set of data, we basically uh, compute only on subset of data, right? So in literature, if you see in the traditional research literature, um, uh, the, the, the way to achieve approximate computing uh, is, is you can employ techniques like sketches, online aggregation, and so forth and so forth. Uh, but there is a popular te technique that is, uh, which we also build on, is called sampling, right? So as you can see here, in approximate computing, we have uh, a s entire data, and then we take a sample of it, and then we just compute over a on sample of uh, data itself, right? And based on that, we can basically produce an approximate output with some error bound. So give an estimate to the user, like how much uh, uh, the approximate answer is far away from the exact answer, so that it can make some meaningful decisions there as well, right? Interesting thing to, thing to note here is that uh, by varying the amount of sample that we pick, right, the size of sample can actually help us uh, do this trade-off between latency and, uh, uh, and resources uh, that need to be deployed for computing something. So based on this idea, actually, uh, there are many systems uh, have been developed uh, in the research community as well as in the open source community. Uh, mainly, there are three main such systems out there. And the first one is called BlinkDB. I'm sure you must have heard of that. Uh, BlinkDB is an approximate computing engine uh, which is built on top of Spark. Right? So if you go on the Spark website, you can find the details about BlinkDB. Um, then there are two research prototypes. Uh, one is called Approx Hadoop, which is an approximate computing engine built on top of Hadoop, as the name suggests. And then there is a system from Microsoft Research called Quicker, which is another approximate computing engine uh, uh, from Microsoft. Uh, these systems employ different techniques for approximation, but at a very high level, they all work with uh, sampling-based approaches. And they compute sampling or they compute samples on static data. So you have a database and then on which they can compute samples and then they can produce approximate answer, which is fine uh, for the, their use cases. But when we talk about stream analytics, these systems cannot uh, deal with this real-time processing of data because the data is continuously arriving and keeps on changing. Right? And this is what we are after. Right? So in the system that we propose, uh, Stream Approx, uh, we aim to target uh, three main goals. Uh, the first is that we want to support approximate computing uh, for existing applications. So your existing Flink applications can actually benefit from our approach. Currently, we are supporting only linear queries, uh, like um, simple approximations on force, mean, average, and things like that. But we are also working on something on joins, um, which we can talk about in the next, maybe, fling forward. Uh, our system provides an interface for the users to make a systematic trade-off. So user can say that uh, I want approximate output within the accuracy of, let's say, 90% and within some time uh, every few milliseconds, for example. And Last but not the, uh, and the, one of the most important thing is that as opposed to the other systems that I talked about, uh, which relies on static database, we employ an online sampling algorithm so that we can actually produce approximate answers in, um, for real-time stream processing. Right? So that's the high-level motivation and the design goals of our system. Uh, next, uh, uh, we will talk about design and some results, and I will hand over to Do, who actually is the lead for this project, right? So, Do, thanks. Thanks, Pramod. Uh, welcome again to our talk, and uh, now I would like to uh, present uh, the uh, design of our system. 
Uh, first, uh, let me start with give you the overview of our system. So at a high level, uh, the data stream may contain several substreams, and we integrate it using stream aggregator, let's say Kafka, to create an input for our system. And a user can send a query and the budget to our system to perform analysis over the input stream. And the query budget here can be informed of latency through boot guarantee or the desired uh, computing result for processing the query or the desired accuracy that user want to achieve. As mentioned before, uh, the idea behind our work is uh, using the sampling techniques for the upstream computing. And the most widely used uh, sampling technique is uh, simple random sampling. And um, as you see, can see in the figure, uh, assume that we have the input stream with just four substream uh, in different color. And the right side, we show the uh, sampling resource um, with a sampling fraction of 50%. And the problem of the simple random sampling is it can may overlook some substream that contribute only a few data items. For, the, for example, the substream in the green color here. And if there is a query, specific query to the data item in the green substream, the system may return the null result. And it is, uh, is unaccept unacceptable. And uh, in another word, a simple random sampling uh, may not uh, preserve statistical property of original data. And to overcome the problem of Simple random sampling, terrasified sampling have been proposed. The idea of uh, terrasified sampling is it doesn't overlook any some uh, any substream. And for each substream, we is we perform simple random sampling to take the sample of data. By doing this way, terrasified sampling can preserve the statistical property of original data. However. Both simple random sampling and stratified sampling is required to know the population size beforehand. And it uh, may not be the case for stream uh, processing because uh, input data stream is unbound. We don't know the population size, uh, population size beforehand. And to overcome this problem is reservoir sampling has been proposed and reservoir sampling allowed to take a sample of psi k from input data stream. And the way it works is as follows. Uh, reservoir sampling we may use a reservoir with size of case. And first, it will uh, fill up the reservoir with the first k data item. And the four k data item, uh, k plus one, the next data item, uh, we replace uh, the data item in reservoir with probability of k di by i. There are some mistakes there. Um, and the i is the indexing of the arriving data item. However, the uh, sampling mechanism is very difficult to implement it in the distributed manner. And to build our system, actually, the first framework we investigate is the RBG Spark. Because RBG Spark is about several libraries for the upstream computing. And, uh, even this library is a support only for batch only, but we can leverage the sampling available in Spark for the stream processing. Because as you may know that in Spark streaming, they consider input data stream as a sequence of uh, micro batches. And for each micro batch, we can apply the simple random sampling available, uh, sampling uh, library already available in Spark to take a sample of uh, the input data stream. Now, let's see how the Spark implemented uh, terrasified sampling. As a first step, S Spark will create data using group by key operator. And the next step for each uh, substream or each teratum, it will perform simple random sampling. And in Spark, in Spark uh, they implement the simple random sampling is based on the uh, random source algorithm. It means that for each data item, we it will assign 
the value in rank of 0 and 1 to each data item, and then it's source of data item, and to take the sample, to take the top k, uh, uh, smallest data item. And let's come back to the classified sampling. And the final step is required to synchronize uh, between the worker node to select the sample size of case. And it turns out that this, uh, this step is very expensive because it requires to uh, shuffle the data through the cluster. And in this work, we designed a new online uh, sampling algorithm to take the sample of input data stream. Uh, the algorithm name is uh, Online Adaptive Classified Reservoir Sampling. And the idea of our uh, algorithm is uh, we are, uh, similar with classified sampling. We don't overlook any substream. So for, uh, for each substream, instead of performing simple random sampling, we perform the reservoir sampling. So we make use of reservoirs with the same size of case to take a sample of of substream. However, we recognize that uh, the data item belong to uh, different substream should not consider equally because uh, substream, uh, substream come to the uh, system in with different arriving rate, and the substream contribute more data in the original data. Should the data item should be considered more important than other, and to reserve that property, we add the weight accordingly. Amazing that we want to calculate the approximate sum. Uh, for example, in the substream one here, uh, original has eight data item, and uh, the, we take the sample size, uh, uh, we make you a reservoir with size of four, and the four data item in reservoir here actually representative for the eight data item original. And the weight here is the number of data items we've seen so far in each substream divided by for the sum, sum, uh, divided by the uh, size of the reservoir, uh, which is 8 divided by 4. Similarly, in the second substream, the weight will be 6 divided by 4, because original, uh, it has um, 6 data items. In the special case, when the substream is contribute only few data items, even number of data item in the uh, substream, even less than the size of reservoir, uh, each data item in reservoir here is representative for itself. So the weight we uh, accordingly here is one because it's representative for itself. And by doing this way, we can preserve the statistical property of original data. And moreover, this algorithm is very easy to par uh, parallelize, and we don't need any synchronization between the worker to take a sample of input data. Now let's see how it works in, in distributed manner. In the figure, so is a two worker node, and for the each worker node, we perform our sampling algorithm independently, and there are no communication between them to take the sample of data. It doesn't matter how many data items in each substream a, a big worker have, it's just as, as the weight accordingly to preserve the property, as the statistical property of original data. And we have built a prototype to evaluate our design. And actually, we uh, implemented uh, our system both with uh, Apache Flink and also Spark Streaming. And for aggregator, we make use of Kafka uh, to build the stream aggregator. And let's see more detail our implementation. So uh, to implement our algorithm is a quite st straightforward for Flink implementation. And in fact, we create the operator uh, sampling operator using the uh, proposed sampling algorithm. And the next operator in the data flow, data flow engine of Link, we perform the computation on the sample of data and provide the approximate result. And we also implemented uh, the error estimation module to calculate the error bound for the result. And in addition, this module also verify the accuracy already satisfied with the 
accuracy that users want to achieve. If not, a uh, feedback mechanism will be activated to redefine the sampling fraction. So I already covered the design of our system, and now I would like to give you some evaluation results. So I will give you some uh, results about uh, throughput with different sample, sample uh, size, and also the relationship between, or trade-off between the throughput and accuracy. And for further results, we'll look at our paper. And we evaluate our system using cluster with 70 nodes. Uh, including node for Kafka, node for uh, Flink, and we make use of both micro benchmarks uh, and two real world case study to evaluate our system. And for micro benchmark, uh, we use a synthetic uh, data, which is uh, uh, Gaussian distribution and Poisson distribution uh, data set. And uh, for first case study, we use the network traffic trace. Uh, from Kaida, and for sec second case study, we use the uh, network taxi, uh, New York taxi uh, rice records. Uh, first, had a look at the throughput of uh, systems. And the x axis we share shows the different sampling fraction, and the y axis we show the throughput of the uh, evaluated systems. And the higher, the better. First, have a look at the uh, Spark-based stratified sampling using the available uh, sampling mechanism in Spark. As you can see, uh, Spark-based stratified sampling is scaled not very well with different sampling fraction. And the reason is it performs stratified sampling for each micro batch. And now take a look in our system. And our system is uh, uh, based on the Spark implementation is achieved uh, around two times higher throughput compared to Spark based system. And more in interestingly, with Fling implementation, uh, even achieve better performance. Actually, we achieved 1.3 higher throughput over the uh, Spark by stream approach, with the sam sampling fraction is less than 60%. Now, take a look on the accuracy. Um, so in this experiment, we keep the accuracy the same. And then we measure throughput to see the benefit of our uh, system. So the x-axis, we show the accuracy loss. And the y-axis, we show the uh, throughput. And the higher, the better. And the figure show is the spark-based stream approach is a chip around 1.32 times higher throughput over spark by uh, thrustify sampling with the same accuracy. And for filling implementation, it achieved even better. Is in fact, it achieved 1.62 times higher throughput over spark by uh, stream approach with uh, the same accuracy. And now I would like to conclude our talk. So in this work, uh, we implemented, uh, designed and implemented the system stream approach, a system for approximate stream analytics. And we achieved, the for, 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 uh, we achieved flowing design goals. First, we achieved chamber, a chamber and, uh, property. It means that it, to use our system, but uh, it requires minor change in the original code, actually. To use our system, we just call the sampling operator. And the next property we achieve is a practical by we offer the uh, adaptive execution by on query budget. So uh, the user can change the budget during the runtime. And finally, we achieve efficiency by design on light ratified sampling for stream analytics. And now I would like to thank you for your uh, attention and will you check out our system uh, and our paper uh, were published, uh, we published in uh, middleware this year. And finally, thank you. I'm happy to answer some questions. Yeah. Uh, 
Thanks for the talk. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, uh, there's always different kinds of ways you can sample from data. Um, for instance, if you are aware in advance that the distribution you're sampling from is a normal distribution, the way you sample should be different. Yeah. You have provided us with uh, some, some different ways of sampling. How flexible is the system to defining, for someone to define their own um, sampling policies? If I want to do something custom, I can do that, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, in our system, is, uh, um, the first requirement is uh, the input data stream has to follow the same di distribution. Doesn't matter if it's Gaussian or whatever, uh, because, it's, uh, because we use the central limit theorem to make calculate the error about. Because in approximate computing is, uh, system, is uh, very important to provide the error bound to the user. Because if uh, you provide only the approximate result, it doesn't make any sense without an error bound. So user don't know how far from the approximate result to with the exact results. Yeah, pretty cool results. My question is, you started your presentation by talking about latency, and suddenly you ended up evaluating throughput. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Second, because it's linked to latency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you handle five mil events per second, how is the logic to transform from the actual error you're getting to updating your sampling strategy to rectify your parameters? Yeah. How fast is that? How, how fast to how, how fast are what's all about the because if you do six mil events per second, yeah, then how long does it take to actually convert from an error or like a change in error to a modification in the parameters of your sampler? So it, uh, to calculate the uh, convert from the uh, uh, error about uh, the user want to achieve to the latency is quite fast because. Um, if you uh, uh, know the equation to calculate the error power is uh, uh, then um, sigma multiplied with uh, uh, sigma divided by um, square root of n, multiplied with alpha, uh, this, etc. And by on this equation, we can uh, quickly convert from the error power we want to achieve to the uh, sample size is the n, square root of n. When the n increase, the error bow is small, and we achieve better accuracy. Yes, uh, yes. But uh, it's uh, in practical, it's quite difficult because it depends on the application. <laughs> So uh, just to make sure, did you compute the like? Did you sample based on a window? You know, did you also compute the error based on a window, or is this yeah, continuous? Yeah, uh, by, by on window. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, great talk. Maybe I missed it. Thank you. Uh, well, did you try to come up with some kind of metric to put the sampling computational effort? Into this because for me it looks like that the sampling would take a lot of also computational effort to make yeah. the samples itself and then you just put this heavy part before it. Uh, actually, is the uh, algorithm is designed for the online sampling, so it's not uh, take overhead um, much overhead like traditional sampling that you have the data in hand and then you perform the sample. So we we perform the sample in the online manner. So every data item come in and we take a sample beyond that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Other question? So, thank you very much.